as I watched you walk away, there was nothing I could say. The joy you brought, the dreams I saw. My name is Harriet Chung. I'm from Hong Kong. Growing up in Hong Kong, I just every day is just singing, dancing, and playing piano for me, and this is my life. And I used to、um, get around my all my neighborhood kids. We're from like I'm from a very not very rich family, so、uh, we are in、um, public housing. So I actually、uh, gather all my friends in the neighborhood. I say, "Come on, come up, and we're going to sing and dance." And I would just make like pretend、uh, rehearsal for all the kids. And I say, "Okay, you're going to sing, you're going to dance, and we're going to do this song, and you're going to play the little keyboards." And then after we have our rehearsal, we will get. Our parents to come over, and I remember、uh, by the staircase, like the stone, the the stone staircase, I will have pretend tickets as well. So we'll you know pretend selling the tickets, and then、uh, the parents, all the parents will be sitting on the steps, and then we'll be performing for、um, all the parents, and that's my childhood.、Um, I guess this is my passion since I was very very little. One day I was watching a TV series. In Hong Kong, it's called Ballet Symphony. I watch all these girls were big, doing big leaps across the rocks. Two big rocks here, and there's a big river across the river. So I was like so inspired by that. So I really, really want to learn to do ballet. That time it was tough because my parents already gave me piano lesson and singing lesson. So another lesson on top of that is really hard. So,、uh, but I begged them. I begged them so hard, and so I got my ballet outfit and my ballet little ballet slippers, and I went into the class. I was the oldest in the class, and all these little five years old, and I'm I was ten. So it was a little bit tough for me at the beginning, but I try to work really, really hard so I can progress. When I was traveling with the choir, I see there's so many great things outside outside Hong Kong. I can learn different culture. I can learn different art form. So when I was in、uh, Hong Kong Academy for Performing Arts, I was talking to my friends. I said, "Well, you know what? I really want to go somewhere else to further my study." And a group of my friends actually said, "Yes, yes, let's go, let's go. Where do we want to go?" So I chose a few schools. I want to go to Royal Ballet School or、uh, the National Ballet School in Canada. Um, and one in U.S., but those schools are way too expensive. <laughs> That's how I decided to come to Canada. It's the National Ballet School that was the most affordable for me. Little that I know, when I came to the National Ballet School, it was really, really tough. It was very hard because my training was not on par with them. They were. They were trained since they were like six, seven years old from the school. They were in, you know, in the part-time program, and they were in residence. So they basically grow up with excellent teacher. But in Hong Kong, we trained like once a week, twice a week. In、uh, those ballet school is not very pro professional. So I was struggling in、um, in the National Ballet School. They actually want to kick me out of that.、Uh, Of the school, because、uh, they they told me I would never have a career there because、um, I was not good enough. So they said you better to pack up and go back to Hong Kong to do something else. But、um, I was very lucky that time. I met a really really amazing teacher. He was、um, taking class at the National. He would just want to keep in shape, and he 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 saw me and he told me. They actually don't know how to teach you. How about you come to my class in the evening? Then when you when you graduate, you actually will be better than all of those people. And you know he was the guiding light. Like I was in complete darkness. I was breaking down and、um, really sad. But I cannot tell my parents because they get up their whole. Life saving to give me this opportunity to Canada, and every time I talk to them, I said,、um, "I'm fine, I'm good, I'm doing really well." 
But uh, in the meantime, I was, you know, you know, very sad and. But I told I told myself I I have to make it. I have no um, other plans. I have nothing to fall back on. Maybe that's a blessing. So I every day I after my training all day in the national. At night I go to my amazing teacher called Mr. Sing Bang Fu, and he saved me and he made me into a dancer. So after I graduate, I was the first one who got job offers. Uh, I got into a company, a dance company called Ontario Ballet Theatre, a small company. I can tour around, uh, you know, uh, Canada. I can tour around, bus tour, and I do school shows. I do small theatre show. That was really great. And later on, I went into a company in the States. And then I came back, still dancing with uh, Mr. Sing Bang Fu, and he he put up really amazing show. And suddenly I got, uh, well, my boyfriend, actually, he's an actor. Um, he told me, hey, Harriet, you should, you should look into this. This show is called Tianmen Dreams. And they want a girl that can sing and dance. And I said, no, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to do sing and dance. I only want to do ballet. And um, he encouraged me. Why not? Just try. And then I, I went there and auditioned for Tianmen Dreams. I was so scared because I never, never thought that I can do my singing and dancing together. So this is what they require. They require singing and dancing together. So I went in there. I do my singing. I, I did my dance call, and they loved me. And then I would do my little singing call and they were guiding me through the, through the singing because when I was in Hong Kong, I was trained as a choir singer. So I always blend in, I use my mixed voice and head voice. So it's not something they were looking for. So they said, how about you do ying, 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 ying. I did that ying, 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 ying. How about you sound like this? And I did all this sound for them. And then little that I know, they, I have a call back. I have a call back. So again, I hear people were singing amazingly outside. So I went in thinking, thinking that I will have no chance. But at the end, they warned me because I was the right person, right time at the right moment. And they trained me during that production. And they made me into equity. And um, I had a principal role um, during the production. I was rehearsing uh, with Robert Du Rosier. He's a very famous choreographer in Canada. And he told me, he pulled me aside, he told me, uh, Harriet, you know, tomorrow there's an audition for Phantom. I said, what's Phantom? Phantom is a very famous um, musical. You should go. They need ballerina that can sing. I said, no, I don't want to do musical anymore because I want to go into big ballet company. I, I'm done with the small company. I'm ready. I'm ready. So he said, no, there's a lot of money in, involved. And I will cover for you. Tomorrow you're going to be sick. And in this rehearsal, you're going to audition for Phantom. I'm like, are you sure it's okay? Uh, he said, yes, you go. And, you know, he's my you know, angel that really gave me this light. So I went into the audition, not knowing what's Phantom. I was wearing a purple leotard with cut off like short shorts, not knowing this is a classical piece. I have no idea. There's no Google that time. So I went in, but I did a really, really good audition. I danced really, really well. And um, so I went into sing and sang Far From The Home I Love. So bingo. That was my song because that's what they want. A really young voice with a head voice. So a few months later, after that audition, I got a call from them and I got the job. I got the job right now. But I said, I'm in Tiananmen Dreams. I have to finish the show. So uh, that job is for tour, for touring. So the Phantom Tour. But I still have to finish Tiananmen Dreams. So I didn't take the job. I was like, okay, this is okay. Not meant to be. And then after I finished uh, Tiananmen Dreams, they called me again a few months later. They said, there's an opening in the Toronto cast. 
So will you be interested? So I'm like, yes, I'm so interested. And that's how I started Phantom. And the, for the first few months, I feel I'm on top of the world. I was dancing, I was singing on stage every night, eight shows a week. I was so, so, so happy. And um, I still take dance class every day uh, before the show and also further my study with vocal training because I know my, my background was um, a singer in a choir, right? So it's not the musical theater sound. And when I was little, I never thought like my ballet training and my singing training can combine. Something is called musical. I, I, when I was little, I loved sound, the sound of music. That's the only musical I know. And I, I will put it on repeat three times when there's thunderstorm that I cannot go to school. So that's my thing. I will be watching Sound of Music like over and over again. So that's the only musical I know. And um, when I came to Canada, I said, okay, I actually can combine these two and do musical, Phantom of the Opera. I learned so much from all the talents around me. Um, opera singer, musical theater singer, and of course the ballerina that we are taking lessons as well to uh, be a better singer. During Phantom, I kept up my ballet training. I trained really, really hard because I know there's something else after Phantom that I want to do. So I auditioned for Ballet British Columbia, which is a, the most prestige ballet company in Canada, uh, contemporary ballet company. Um, I got that magic phone call one day and I got a job in there, a principal dancer. And I cannot take the offer. I was crying and crying and crying because that time I, um, I decided to help my parents to come over to Canada. Um, if I do that, I have to sponsor them. So I have, if I take the Ballet BC job, I wouldn't have enough money to sponsor them to come over. And I stay in Phantom. So I thought, yes, after Phantom, I'll go back to Ballet BC and that would be great. After my parents come over and then I go back to Ballet BC, that would be great. But little that I know, after staying in Phantom for a while and training my voice for a longer time, and I discover a lot more things that I really like to do. So the Cats audition uh, were in Canada. And I tried. I went, went into Cat's audition. I was not good enough that time, the first time. I didn't get it, and, but I loved it. The choreography and all the singing, everything, I loved it. So I worked really, really hard. And then the next one, the next audition was in New York. So I, you know, I save up my saving, I fly to New York and crash on my friend's couch. And I was determined, I'm gonna get it this time. So. I went into an audition and I saw all the like few hundred girls were like their legs is up to their ear and they sing like incredible. I almost want to came back, like turn right back to Canada because there's no chance I would get it. It's like way too good, those kids. And then um, I said, okay, I pay for my plane ticket. I just do this, do my best. So I did my, my best. I did six or seven rounds. And I was so lucky until like until the last few bunch, like a few people. And then I said, I'm done, I'm done. So I was so starving. I was like, gra grab my last bit of snack, my chocolate chip cookies, I still remember. And then they call my name. Harry Chung, can you sing this little bit with the pianist? Which is memory, that song in head voice. So head voice with all the chocolate chip cookies is bad news. I can belch that time, but with the head voice with a really, you know? So I, I was like, oh my gosh, why? But I did a, you know, I did an okay job, I think. I did my best. And I didn't think any of it because there's so many people were so great. Uh, and the last bunch that at the last, last call, everybody was really, really good. So a few months passed by, a few months passed by, and I got that magic phone call. Uh, I was in 
the bathtub actually I still remember that I'm like really Germany yes yes thank you thank you so here it is I will be in Germany so I went to Hamburg Germany there was so much talent under one roof I cannot believe it um, we have a few Canadians uh, a few Americans but most of them are from all over Europe um, we have to learn the whole entire musical in German. It was really tough. And the dance is not my ballet, it's jazz. So it was really tough at the beginning, but I was so, so determined. I stayed behind rehearsal and I work really, really hard because all the other dancers, actually they're jazz dancer and tap dancer. I was the only ballet dancer there that is mainly do ballet. So. I need a lot of catching up to do. I was so, so lucky to get into this company, Stella Production. They have 13, 14 musicals around Germany and I am in one of them. So lucky to be there. And we were treated as celebrity. A lot of people wait for us at stage door and I have like my, my portrait painted in oil painting and Christmas we have presents, Easter we have presents, so that was a really great one. So after a year and a half, I came back to Toronto to close the Phantom of the Opera. I was so lucky to be able to work with Paul Stanley, uh, the lead singer in Kiss, and he is such an amazing guy. We actually party together as well. So after Phantom, um, after Phantom closed, I keep auditioning and I was in a few production of The King and I and um, I choreographed for one of them as well and I learned so much about different musical and my focus is switching now and I still I still keep my training in ballet and in uh, vocally I still keep singing lessons but I'm like you know what ballet is not my desire anymore my, not my main focus anymore. I love it, I still love it. But when I only can dance, I feel like I'm mute. I need this too. I need my voice and I need to move. So I think musical theater is my calling. Our first workshop was at the ASCAP Disney Musical Theater Workshop in New York. It was directed by Stephen Swartz. And we learned so much from him and all these talents were involved. They were all Broadway singers. I remember that day, all these talents, they just closed Flower Drum Song on Broadway. And they came to work with us in the workshop and I was so humbled by them. And I was the lead. I was so scared <laughs> because all these ensemble people, all these uh, leads are from Broadway. The most amazing talent in the world and I learned so much from Steven Swartz and the whole panel they gave us a lot of um, feedback it was so special for me to be able to perform in front of my family my friends my teachers and bring back all my skills to Hong Kong I was so grateful and the team was amazing and the production did really well and we have really, really good reviews. Especially, I cannot believe that I had such amazing reviews because Hong Kong is, you know, is known to be mean. And um, I swear, I swear I can take these reviews and go to my grave really happily. The production won the Hong Kong Theatre Award for Best Original Work. Luckily, they filmed the production and made it into a film. Now, we have won over 60 International Film Festival Awards, including Best Musical Film, Best Original Score, Best Picture, and Best Actress. I have won a few of those. As I watched you walk away, there was nothing I could say. The joy you brought the dreams I sought all vanished yesterday. My recording career happened by accident. 
We were filming the music video for A World Away to promote the musical Golden Lotus. And then after that, there's so many amazing feedbacks and reviews from social media and my friends and my family. So I think I should keep going. So one song after the other, one music video after the other. And little did I know, my first album was born. And right now I'm working on my second album. And I think there's another one coming after that. I'm so thankful that I have people from around the world telling me they love my music. Some of them, they actually tell me that they have to hear my song every single day. I have fans around the world. They give me great feedback. I'm so grateful that I can use my music and my story to connect everyone around the world. And I really want to keep doing this for as long as I live. could fly in the clear blue sky to see the